I'm Priscilla Barrera with the Investing News Network, and here with me today is Doug Campbell, CEO of Solid Power. Doug, thank you so much for joining us today. Thank you for having me. Right, so the Graphite and Anodes conference just finished. What is uh, your main takeaway from the conference? How did you find the event? Yeah, so um, I thought the event was was very informative. Um, I think my, my main takeaways are that, obviously I'm here representing next generation anodes, well, next generation technology, and by association anodes. Uh, but my takeaway is that uh, graphites aren't dead yet. <laughs> so there's still a place for graphites in the relative near term, but of course, Folks like myself, working with metallic lithium, and then some of the silicon anode folks. I mean, that that is definitely on the horizon. So you need, need, need to pay attention. All right, and as you were saying here, you gave a presentation about solid state batteries. Can you let us know why investors should be paying attention to developments in that space? Yeah, so I think first and foremost, in your investors or you know the audience would probably understand that you know the uh, vehicle electrification significant revolution, it, it, it's coming. And of course, that represents a huge uh, opportunity for, for investors. At the center of that is really energy storage, um, because that, that's what will enable, that'll address things like range anxiety, et cetera. Um, solid state in particular has emerged as the most viable candidate that can uh, potentially displace lithium ion. And of course, as you look at the numbers, the, the, the market for rechargeable batteries is just huge. So I think it's it's really uh, investors at their own peril can ignore um, solid state as a as a potential displacer of, of what we have today. Right. And what would you say are some of the benefits of solid state batteries? Could they really eventually reduce electric car costs? Yeah, absolutely. So I'll start with the basics. So a solid state battery, you are replacing the liquid electrolyte, which allows the ions to move back and forth between the electrodes, and you're replacing that with a solid ion conducting material. And that can be a variety of different types of materials. Uh, but the general benefits are higher energy through different electrode chemistries, most notably metallic lithium, which is what I was discussing here at this event, um, improved safety. Uh, because you have really issues like thermal runaway, fire explosion under abuse testing, all those things become non-issues. So, uh, and when you think about a safer battery pack, that's basically a lower cost battery pack because remember vehicle manufacturers think of the cost of the entire pack system. That includes not just the cells, but the packaging that goes along with that, the control electronics, we call it battery management system, thermal cooling, safety features, all those kinds of things. In a solid state battery, you have the potential to, uh, I wouldn't go so far as to say eliminate, but greatly mitigate a lot of those safety features. And that thereby drives down the cost at the pack level. So at the end of the day, what you have to do is address the cost at the cell level. And that's precisely what we're focused on. Right. And um, on the other hand, what are some of the challenges of developing solid state batteries and maybe implementing them at mass scale? Yeah, so I'll, I, I tend to think of those challenges in, in two categories. So one is performance. So I think r right now I can confidently state that there is no one solid state battery technology that meets all EV performance metrics. The ones that really jump out are charge rate. So you, you hear a lot in the news, quick charge, hey, I want to you know pull up to a, not a gas station, but an <laughs> electricity station and, you know, refill, you know, charge my battery in the amount that it took me to refill my tank. That That is a challenge. It's a challenge even for lithium ion. It's more so of a challenge for solid state, especially when you're using uh, lithium metal uh, as an anode. Um, so uh, obviously there's a huge number of advancements. Just here at Solid Power, we're seeing continuous increase in the, uh, or improvement in the charge rates uh, that we're able to see. But we still can't claim success at the EV. So that's that's technical challenge. Uh, and then the second one is economic. So um, we are introducing some new materials into the supply chain. Today, those materials are quite costly. They're costly because they're produced in very, very small scales, laboratory scale, you could sort of think about it. Um, and so the cost of those materials really needs, needs to come down. Um, at the end of the day, uh, I believe very strongly that uh, OEMs will not adopt any energy storage technology that comes at a, at a price premium, um, just because the, the cost of that battery pack is such a contributor at the vehicle level. Right. And um, when do you expect the market will see them in electric cars then? No sooner than five years I, for mass production, meaning you or I as a consumer could walk over to our, you know, uh, uh, you know, dealer and purchase a vehicle no sooner than five years. I think five to ten years is a realistic window. 
Great. And uh, you are a CEO of Solid Power, as we mentioned before. What makes your company different to other developers of solid state batteries? Yeah, so first of all, uh, the things that make us unique are our pragmatism. So we're, we tend to be fairly, um, we try to minimize risk as much as, as we can. So we, we, we've zeroed in on a pathway that we think has the best performance, and manufacturing, and cost potential. <clears throat> so that's, I would say, somewhat unique. Uh, the second part, and this, I would say this is much more unique, which is we're very collaborative. So we look for partnerships, um, and, and we do that, again, because of our pragmatism pragmatism, we do that primarily to, to uh, reduce risk. Um, at the end of the day, you know, bringing a full uh, solid state battery cell to production, mass production, et cetera, there's a tremendous amount of risk in there. So as much as we can offload that risk with partners, so some examples include um, cathode active material. We're working with the same cathode active material that most developers are working with, which is the nickel rich NMC. Um, we don't want to get into that business, so we work with partners to help tailor the, the materials for that. On the other side of the cell, metallic lithium as an anode. We, again, don't work on, on that material, so we work with partners who can optimize it for use. And then what we do is bring everything together along with the one component we do produce, which is our electrolyte. Uh, and then, of course, downstream from there, the, the, the customers, the end users, the vehicle manufacturers. So we're extremely collaborative in, in how we work. Right, and this year you received a big investment to continue to develop this type of batteries, the solid state. What does that mean for your company going forward? Yeah, it's all about production scale. So up until this particular investment, everything we did could still be construed as laboratory scale. Hand-built, maybe building cells up to an amp hour, about half of what's in a typical smartphone. Uh, and above that, the limiter is just, you could think of it like a, a defect issue because everything's hand built, a lot of, lot, of, lot of imperfections and things like that. This capital is going to be used to stand up our first truly automated high quality production line at full capacity be, would be about 10 megawatt hours. And so the purpose for that is one, get the scale, but secondly, it's quality. We recognize we can only build so good of cells by hand. Um, and so this will allow us to get to high precision production. Right, and my last question for you today, looking forward to next year, what's ahead for your company and for solid state batteries, the space in general? Yeah, so starting with our company, it's about getting to scale. It's about delivering full-scale cells to our auto partners. And so when we talk about full-scale in the EV space, we're talking many tens of amp hours. So these are very, very large cells. Uh, we need to deliver those in reasonable volumes, tens to hundreds, so that the uh, our uh, partners uh, can really start their qualification process because a new energy storage chemistry is not trivial when you're talking about an EV. There's an extensive qualification uh, period that needs to go through that. So that's a lot of what's going to happen in 2019 and 2020. I think beyond 2019, we can start to look at our first in-vehicle uh, demonstrations. Um, and then for us, we start thinking about mass production. Um, the next stage of production for us will be into 2021. Um, from my perspective, I think that mirrors what's, what's happening in the solid state battery space. I think you're going to see a narrowing of the field, which we've started to see. Um, you know, the, there, there's a small collection of, of startups like ourselves that I think are really credible. And then there's a lot of the, the larger players. I mean, pretty much anyone you can think of is involved in some way or another. Um, and I think, I think you're going to see a further narrowing of that field over the next couple of years. Um, and the true sort of leaders that are going to bring it to market will emerge. All right, Doug, thank you so much for joining us today. Thank you for having me.